20 years ago. It's hard to testify about some things without people you, in your mind you worry about. They're thinking you're being briggity about it. You know what I'm talking about? You ever talking about? But the Lord knows my mind, my heart, I'm not. But I want to tell this tonight because I want my children and I want these young people to know the blessing in giving. And, and I want them to know that. I want them to understand that and learn that. 20 years ago, me and my wife was having a tough time financially. We was having trouble paying our bills. Come on. And we was going to revival. Ronnie Matney was in a revival up at Ace Drop Holler. And uh, we was in revival. We was going to go up there and listen to him preach at night. And uh, we just had got done talking about uh, what we was going to do to try to pay our bills, what we was going to spend our money. We just didn't have it. It wasn't in there. And uh, we went up there that night, and uh, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and told me to write Ronnie Matney a check for $500. <laughs> Amen. For $500. It wasn't in my bank. And I thought, well, that's just me, you know. That's just me. That's just me. And uh, he got up to preach, and he was a preaching, and I felt like the Lord Randall told me again, you need to write this man a check tonight for $500. And I thought, man, I just talked to my wife right before we came to church. We didn't have the money to pay the light bill. Now, I could have went to my mom and my dad. I could have went and asked them for help, but I didn't do that. I just was depending on the Lord. And I thought, no, I'll, I'll, I'll get my money, you know. I'll get a little later, and then I'll write him a check when I got it, and I'll know. It'd be bad to write a preacher from another preacher a check, and it bounce, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be awful? Well, I, uh, I thought that, and I thought that, and I thought that all during that service. I couldn't tell you a thing what that man was preaching about. And if I don't ever get out of my shoe leather tonight, when I got done, when that service was about to close, there's a having a handshake, and there's a man come up to me, and he had no idea what God had been talking to me about. And here's the first thing he said. If you're going to give Ronnie Matney a check, you got to know how to give it to him. Now, that's what that man said to me. He said, he won't take it if you just hand it out to him. He said, you got to go buy it. Go buy it. Slide down his pocket. Man, I went and I got my wife. I said, honey, I said, where's your checkbook? She said, it's out in the van. I said, go get it. I said, write Rodney Matney a check for $500. And her eyes. <laughs> See, the Lord been talking to me. He hadn't been talking to her. Amen. She hadn't been talking to her. You remember that night, honey? And uh, she went and she looked at me and I'll never forget it. She said, it's going to bounce. I said, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not going to bounce. Amen. You see, you got to learn to trust the Lord. Amen. You've got to learn to depend on God. Amen. That little old woman that had two mites, she had cashed in more than she had, more than all of them, because she cashed in of all of her abundance. Well, the Bible said, or amen, the Bible said, uh, in this right here, I went and I got my wife, and she wrote him a check for $500, and I went by him, and I done just like that man said. I just walked by him and I slick it right down his pocket and I just kept on walking. Amen. I got home and I, my wife said, what are we going to do? And I said, I don't know what we're going to do. Amen. I done wrote the check now. It's done done. And uh, I got a letter the next day and all the way up in the state of Maryland, there was a woman laying in bed. God got that woman up at night at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. I forget what the letter said. God, now you listen to this. You tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about when I'm telling you God, amen, don't provide and God don't bless. He got that, well, she, he got that woman up at two or three o'clock in the morning and wrote me a check for a thousand dollars. I'm talking about 20 years ago. I'm talking about 20 years ago. Wrote me a check. I paid my bills. I covered the $500 check and I had money, amen, to go get groceries on. Now you see what I'm talking about? The Lord will try you now. He's going to bless you. But when he blesses you, he's going to try you. I just thought I'd share that with you tonight. Learn how to give and God will bless you. Praise the Lord. If there was a
case everybody knows we've been we've been really troubled here lately and I know that I've been down and out and uh, I was praying the other day and I said Lord I feel like they can't handle things as good as I can I said I would take it I would take what's wrong with him or what they think's wrong with him I would take it if I could but I can't but I'm glad that I've got one that I could call on to help me and I thank him yes, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Yes, thank you. Praise the Lord. Bob, Judy, y'all come on sing. Well, I got good news for Missy. 2,000 years ago, as a man took every bit of it. Amen. Carried every bit of it on his shoulders. Praise his holy name. You pray for Good to have Janice with us tonight. Testify, Janice. Say something for the Lord. I'm just glad tonight to be here. I'm glad that the Lord saved me. I'm glad for all the things he's done. Amen. That he's kept me through the years and he's met all my needs. Every time I need you, he's been there. Yeah. Amen. Amen, sister. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Yeah, yeah. That old mean rotten husband of hers ain't got saved yet. Yeah. That old rascal. Amen. And she she told me the other day, she said, pray for him. And I said, well, if he won't come to church. I told her, Brandon has been preaching up at her church. I said, maybe we can have a few nights meeting. She said, he won't come to church. I said, well, if you can get him to the porch, I'll come to your porch and preach. <laughs> Amen. That's right. We'll go to his yeah, if you can get him to the porch and stay on the porch, I'll preach to him. Amen. Try to win him to God. Our people need the Lord, don't they? Amen. They need the Lord.
Somebody preach. If I can find it. Yeah. Give me time. Like strangers. Somebody testify while I'm looking for this.
like some good banjo picking back there. appreciate the Lord. How much was the offering tonight? $926. Let's give the Lord a amen a hand for that. He can make that go a long way. I appreciate that, everybody that had to give. Uh, we're going to get Sarah to come sing. Her and Jacob sang before he uh, uh, started preaching and getting out here. We don't get to hear them much, so we're glad to have Jacob with us tonight. We appreciate him and, and uh, thank the Lord. He goes over to uh, Grace Tabernacle. Is that the name of Grace Tabernacle now? And helping them over there, and I appreciate him and the preaching that he's been doing, and we just appreciate all God's 
God's people, don't we? Yeah, Amen. We thank the Lord for each and every one of you tonight. You know, I like I like to shout every service. I like to get in, but you know, like this morning we had such a good service, and you just really didn't know whether to preach or not. But you know, it's a good night for some good old fashioned preaching. Yeah. Ain't it? Ain't it a good night for some old timey? Amen. Preaching tonight, I'm, I'm anxious to hear him preach. So you come on, sir. Come on, sir. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for saving me and all he's done for me and all he's going to do for me.
here to sing that last verse again. Yeah, God bless them all. God bless them, Jesus. For this girl who needs amazing kind of grace. For forgiveness and a price I couldn't pay. I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. your troubles and strife, but he sees the sparrow that falls to the ground, and he sees the tears that don't make a sound, if you only knew how precious you are in his eyes, if it matters to you, it matters to the master. He wants to share the burdens you bear. Whisper peace when your world gets shattered. If it's your greatest joy or your deepest pain, or you're really needing an answer, if it matters to you, it matters to the Master. Amen. Amen. God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now, if you preach half as good as you sing, we're in for a treat. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That was wonderful. Amen. You pray for him tonight. Bless you, Happy morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Amen. It's so good to be here tonight. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be back. Um, I was thinking a few weeks ago, made two years that I stood over there on July 5th and announced my call to preach uh, behind the mics. And on July 12th, I preached my first message behind this pulpit. To say I was nervous is, is an understatement. I was terrified. Uh, but I've come a long way, but I still get nervous every now and then. And I still find ways that God has, has seen fit to check me. Amen. But I find that uh, through the past two years that it's not always been easy and it's not always been a bed of roses but it's been worth every mile and every minute every every second I've drove every every time I've got up whether I flopped or not it's been worth it and I thank God for for the ability to be back here at, at a place that I can call home with people I call family amen. amen tonight if you have your Bibles go with me to John chapter number 18 and if you know me very well you know I can't preach in this thing so I'm gonna toss this over there um, John chapter number 18 the Lord uh, laid this on my heart this morning in Sunday school, and I had no clue why, um, and I wrote it down. I don't usually write stuff down. If I get a thought, I just it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. Amen. But then we're going to be going to Exodus chapter number 3. So bear with me. John 18, starting in verse number 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the great, over the brook Cedron, where was a great garden unto which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with, with, with lanterns and torches and weapons. Yes. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things. Amen. Knowing all things. Yeah. I want to get this really clear one right before we get back into our reading. I believe in one God, one baptism, but I also believe that there's the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. They can't be separated and they can't be fully put together. It's hard for us to comprehend, but Jesus is God. God is the Holy Ghost. God is the Son. Amen. So if we read this, I want us to understand that it's just like God would be in the picture. Amen. And, and the Bible says, Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them whom seek ye they answered him Jesus of Nazareth and Jesus saith unto them I am he and Judas also which betrayed him stood with them and as soon went then as he had said unto them I am he they went backward and fell to the ground go with me to Exodus chapter number three Amen. Exodus chapter number three. We're going to start reading in verse number one. And uh, I hope that God just pours out his anointing tonight. I feel like somebody uh, can get some help. Exodus chapter number three, verse number one. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock into the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I am now turn, I'm now turn aside. And he said, and he see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Go with me for the lack uh, of time, for the sake of time. Go with me to verse number 13. Amen. We know the story. God has told him what to do. And here, and it says that Moses, and Moses said unto God, behold, when I came unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am, had sent thee. Yeah. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And you may be seated. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word of God. Amen. Tonight, I, I really had an urgency on my heart as Brother Jason was talking about the 
casino. Uh, people do go out and they do gamble, but I feel like more often than not, before you get to the coin slot or before you get to the lottery tickets, you're already gambling with something way more valuable than money, and that is your very own soul. And tonight, I feel like, uh, hey amen, that somebody in here can find something, uh, hey amen, that can help them get through whatever they're going through. Uh, and if the Lord would help me, I want to preach on when it all goes down, uh, stand your ground. When it all goes down, stand your ground. I knew Brandon was going to laugh. Uh, I rhymed it just for him. Uh, amen. But tonight, I know that we read in two different places. Uh, amen. One in the New Testament, one in the Old. Uh, amen. But we find one thing in common. Uh, amen. When Jesus went to these men, uh, amen, he said, who is? Uh, where is Jesus? Uh, and he said, I am he. Uh, amen. One thing that these messages have in common, uh, amen, is that the name of God uh, and the name of Jesus, uh, it grips the hearts of men and women, uh, amen, to overcome the obstacle. Uh, it grips the hearts uh, of a lost nation. Uh, it grips the hearts of a safe church. Amen. <laughs> Moses goes into Egypt and God doesn't say go tell Pharaoh I am sent you God said go tell my people that I am a sent you amen because his people had felt betrayed his people had felt that they were lost and that he was nowhere to be found amen but there was a boy on the back side of the desert who had unfinished business in the land of Egypt who was raised by Egyptians and he said, I am that I am. I have sent you. And he's here tonight. And he sent us to say, Amen. 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 Just stand your ground. <laughs> Jesus went forth. He did not run and hide. What is that? That's boldness. Hey, man, in church, we get so backward. I'm the worst. I feel like God wants me to do something, and I question, I question. And before I know it, that time is already gone. Hey, man, but we've got to stand our ground, Brandon. Hey, man, the devil doesn't come. Hey, man, because he wants your body. Because he wants you. Hey, man. The devil don't want anything to do with you. He wants the spirit of God that's living inside of you to get out. They went to the garden and they didn't seek for the disciples. Amen. They sought for the battery source. And they said, who is Jesus and where can we find him? And Jesus stepped forth. Bold as a lion. Did not run. And he stood his ground. And he said, I am he. And there's something about the I am that at the very mention of his name, amen, demons have to flee. The enemy has to back up. Amen, the Bible said, in the Old Testament, one of the prophets said, amen, unto us the son is born. Unto us the son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulders. Amen, and in that point in time in the garden, he took authority and he said, I am he uh, do with me what you will uh, but I'm not going to back down for nothing <laughs> and we find ourselves on the back side of the desert running from things that are in our past <laughs> I want to help you tonight with the Lord's anointing you know something I've learned in the past couple years? It's the pastor's job to preach standard. It's my job to preach the Bible. That's it. Amen. So if it's in the book, I believe that we should stand our ground. Amen. No matter what. Amen. He feared. Amen. He went back to his camp. They didn't receive him. He goes into Egypt knowing that he killed a man. Amen. But can I tell you tonight, if the son is fed free, you are free indeed. Huh? Amen. Old things are passed away. Huh? That murder is gone. Huh? Amen. The fornication's gone. Huh? The sin's gone. Huh? And it's under the blood tonight. Amen. 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 Thank you. It's under the blood. The only thing that's going to keep my generation from going plumb down the toilet is standing our ground. Yeah, God bless you. I look around 
Everybody's backsliding. It seems like. And it breaks my heart. Because it's not just uh, a two-month thing. It's rooted Christians that for some reason have forgot how to stand. Yeah, yeah you're right. And tonight, you might be a rooted Christian of one year, 20 years, 50 years. It doesn't matter. Hey Amen. Unless you are God, hey Amen. You can fall and you can suffer and you can, hey Amen. Push away that that you once held close. Hey Amen. I can tell you tonight. Oh, there might be troubles and trials. Hey Amen. But if you stand for God, oh, He'll stand for you. Hey Amen. He will provide in the time of trouble. Hey Amen. He will be a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and He will stand if you stand for him. Amen. And there's a stigma that goes on in the church that we must pray to God and if he don't move, he's forsaken us. Yeah, bless you, Lord. He's forsaken us. If you felt that way, raise your hand, please. It might make me feel better. Thank you. But can I tell you, the Bible said that he would never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible said there was a man named Daniel, a man that prayed every day, morning, noon, and night, and he stood his ground, and you know what happened? Into the lines, then he goes. I know it's elementary, but sometimes people just need to hear elementary. Into the lines, then he goes. But Daniel, I can't help but to think he's leaning over, maybe just leaning against the wall, singing until the morning comes, because he knows God is not going to forsake him, Brandon. He knows that God, at one point in time, is going to arrive on the scene. Hey, man, he knows that God, hey, man, when daybreak comes, oh, that somebody's going to get him out of there. Hey, man, it's not a matter of if God will do it. It's when God will do it. Hey, man, if you hold to God and you stand your ground, you will see a breakthrough in your home. You will see a breakthrough in your spiritual walk. You will see a breakthrough in your life tonight. Stand your ground. Now, in a war, the worst thing that can happen to an army is an unexpected ambush from an unexpected place at an unexpected time. I don't know about you, but I don't unexpect the devil to do anything. He's seeking whom he may devour. And he's not trying to get Paul, uh, amen, and get you to do a mighty work for him. Uh, he wants the Holy Ghost that lives in you, uh, amen, to eventually uh, leave your heart uh, and get on out of here. Uh, Brandon, he wants you to stop preaching the gospel. Uh, he wants you to just go as far away from holiness as possible. Uh, amen, but if we stand our ground, uh, amen, things will happen. Uh, amen, the church will be on fire again. Uh, and the Lord uh, will look down uh, and say, oh, they stood their ground just like in the days of Daniel in the days of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are you going to stand? are you going to stand? people ask me why I don't do some of the things I do I say it's not per- it's not it's not for you it's for me there's some things that I gotta stand against that you might be strong enough to fight yourself but if I stand on the solid rock the Bible said he would establish our goings oh what does that mean it means that when you turn left as the song says and you should have went right 
there will be, uh, amen, someone in the way, uh, whether it be a man or a donkey, uh, that says you need to turn around uh, and stand your ground uh, before it gets too late. Uh, amen, church, can I tell you tonight uh, that we've got to stand, uh, amen, if no one else will, uh, amen, the very few uh, that says I'm going to stand, uh, we've got to fight to the end. The church, there's churches everywhere. They are a dime a dozen. They're a dozen a dozen. I drive down the road, there's more churches than houses around here. And that's the truth. I don't go two miles without seeing a church. But somehow the body of God and the bridegroom of God is very small in number. You say, why? Somebody's not standing where they need to stand. And that's just the sad fact. Somebody's not standing for the truth. Amen. But I know good and well that y'all have an amazing pastor that preaches the truth to you day in and day out. And that tells you what is right. Amen. But tonight the choice is up to you. If you go to this church, I guarantee you, you believe in a free will doctrine. That no matter how much Brother Jason preaches, no matter how much Brother Brandon preaches, Brother Paul, no matter how much these men preach, that you have the opportunity to come to the altar and to stand your ground or walk out the door the way you came in. It's the sad fact. Amen. But tonight, the Lord does not want you to leave the same way you came. If you're having trouble standing, the Bible says for us to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. What does that mean? It means that Jesus took a stand, but he still died on Calvary. How did he take a stand if he still died? Amen. Because greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. You know what he was doing? He was fulfilling the law of Christ. He was fulfilling the doctrine. Amen. That God had easily set before us. And if we'll follow after his footsteps, you know what we'll find? Amen. We'll find a rock to stand on. When the floods rise, the rain falls, there will be a place to stand. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, some of us maybe have never stood or maybe have fallen by the wayside. Hey, man. But there was a man who was in the ditch, beaten, left for dead. And do you know what a Samaritan is? It's a half-breed, an outcast, and a nobody. So this man knew exactly what it was like to be right in the ditch where he came from. He looks down and he says, if you can't stand on your own, I've got the strength to help you up. Hey Amen. Some of us need to get our head in the right situation to where we say, I might be standing, but there's brothers and sisters falling every day. Hey Amen. And if we can band together as a body of Christ, and we can lift each other up, pick them up when we fall. Hey Amen. We can see great things happen in the church tonight. And I've come to the realization the only way to heaven is to stand. The only way to heaven is to stand. The Bible talks about a man by the name of Nehemiah who's seen the city torn to pieces. And he goes back to build the wall, but the Bible says he has a hammer in one hand and a sword in the other. And all the while, he's building up this holy city. And he's building the wall. Hey, man, if I was a lay member, I'd tell you what I'd do. I would keep on being a lay member, but I'd work on the building, too. Some of us aren't working on the building the way we need to. 
and we find ourselves laying down the sword. Amen. But it's not just a building match and it's not just a fight. If you're not fighting and building at the same time, amen, there's something going on that just ain't right. Amen. But tonight we can build. Amen. And we can fight at the same time. And the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what? Mighty. To the pulling down of strongholds. I don't know if you feel what I feel tonight. Amen. But there's a Holy Ghost spirit in here tonight. Amen. That can help you out. That can help you to stand. That can help you to fight. If you'll just surrender it all to him. Amen. And there's a plan for everyone. But Jesus said, I came not to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. Yeah. It's not a message of condemnation. It's a message of redemption. Yeah. And what you choose to do with it tonight is completely up to you. And I'm not a long-winded preacher, and I feel like this is where we need to stop. Hey, Amen. But as everybody stands, and Sister Sarah, if you don't care to come give me a song. I love everybody in here. And I preach messages behind this pulpit with love. And I preach some out of anger. And I preach some out of arrogancy. And I apologize, but tonight, I can, I can firmly say I have a pure heart that somebody just needs to get a little bit of help. Just to stand another day. The Bible says confess your faults one to another. You've heard it. I know you have. And I've said it. And I'm sorry. But through that, I've learned to stand. Amen. Tonight, you just need to stand. The Bible says when, I, when having done all to stand. Stand. Stand.